Gentleman may proceed when you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It was nearly 60 years ago that the armistice was signed ending the Korean War. Some have called it the Forgotten War. Just a couple days ago, Representative Kavulik and I uh, were visiting the World War II weekend together. And I had occasion to stop at a table. There was a gentleman there under the hangar, I know, Representative Kavulik. I had the same privilege to meet uh, some of those World War II heroes. But I stopped at a gentleman's table. He had no books. He had no pictures. He had nothing to sign, none of the same type of memorabilia that we would have normally associated uh, with this particular event that's been going on annually for 23 years. But Hank Heim had a paper in front of him, which I found remarkable. I spoke with his son about it. I spoke with Hank about it. He's one of those veterans who could not be here today. And I read the record of an aviator who flew 75 combat missions in World War II. I read about the record of an aviator who was at Pearl Harbor at Hickam Field. Further, I went into the biography. I read about another part of his aviation history and service to his country. He wasn't done with Pearl Harbor, and he wasn't finished with World War II, but he went on to fly 50 more combat missions in Korea. And it isn't unlike the Korean War veteran to serve. I talked to Harry Cruz a few minutes ago outside the hall of the house, and he's still running a Lions Club event in Shillington coming up. They're still serving. I asked some of the men, what of the phrase, the forgotten war, in between other conflicts, maybe not as noteworthy in the press, certainly lacking ticket, ticker tape parades, fire engines, sirens. Is it really the forgotten war? How could we forget this service? How could we forget MacArthur's Inchon Landing with 75,000 men and 261 vessels? He was told by others it could not be done. The seawalls are impenetrable. The tides aren't favorable. But it had to be done because there was a rescue mission that needed to be accomplished. How could we forget Chosin Reservoir where machines and meds and men were frozen under 35 degree below zero temperatures. How could we forget their service in places like Porkchop Hill? How could we forget their liberating on several occasions the South Korean capital city of Seoul? How could we forget the missing in action by the thousands that still lie entombed on the Korean Peninsula? How could we forget the tens of thousands who lost their lives? How could we forget the thousands who suffered debilitating injuries and frostbite? How could we forget this special era of veterans. MacArthur, when he left the Philippines, vowed to return, and he indeed did return to the Philippines. And when he returned to Philippine soil in World War II, he said, by the grace of Almighty God, our forces stand once again on Philippine soil. And indeed, by the grace of Almighty God, our forces liberated 
South Korea from the communist menace? Is there any doubt in our minds about what happened in Korea? If any doubt exists, look at a satellite photograph and observe the north of the country. Dark, foreboding, frozen in fear. And look at that same satellite photograph and observe what's happening in the southern end of the peninsula. And look at the capital city of Seoul. And look at the industrial might and observe the lights at the southern end of that peninsula. No friends, you're not forgotten and your service is not forgotten. No, you're not forgotten by an orphan who was liberated out of harm's way. You've not been forgotten by a civilian who now can go back to that place they call home. You're not forgotten, and I challenge us today that we don't forget. In the back of the auditorium, I'd like to ask the family members of those that are seated up the front, as well as my staff, if they wouldn't mind standing with them is also author and historian Sharon Wells Wagner. She is responsible as much as anyone else, in addition to the good offices of the chairman of the Veteran Affairs Committee, Steve Barrar, for helping put this together. So I'd ask those family members and staff to rise, if you would, just for a moment, please. And one more time before Representative Rossi comes up here, I'd like to ask you to stand as your name is called, please. Mr. Harry Cruz, and we'll acknowledge them as a group at the end. Harry, thank you for your service, and thank you for sharing your daughter these years with my office as a staffer. William Berkey, Elvin Kreider, John Conlin, Bob Burns, John Hoffman, and William Mauger. Ladies and gentlemen, your patriots, your Korean War veterans. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.